Buffalo, Jacksonville. We love Jacksonville. We love Jacksonville. I'm thrilled to be back in my home state of Florida with thousands of loyal, hardworking American patriots. This is some crowd. Uh, I just wish the cameras would show the crowd. They don't want to do that. They don't like to do that, you know? It's harder for us to win because we have a fake news back there. But, but, but somehow we just keep on doing it. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy? This is some... You know, it's interesting. When Biden comes to Florida, he'll have like 12, 13 people. You know, they do the circles. And he has a hard time filling up the circles. Here we probably have 30,000 people or something. That's a lot of people. That's a lot. Well, I want to thank you. 40 days from now, we're going to win Florida. We're going to win four more years in the White House. And this is the most important election in the history of our country. I believe that. It is because we're dealing with people that are crazy. They're going to raise your taxes. They're going to take away your Second Amendment. You know that. Your Second Amendment's not going anywhere with me, I can tell you that. The Democrat Party has been completely taken over by socialists, Marxists, and far-left extremists. They embrace the policies of communist Cuba, socialist Venezuela. They want to end the American dream for Hispanic Americans. We love Hispanic Americans. Wow. Did you see they released the poll today? They said, Trump's doing really well with the, what's going on with the Hispanic? It took you so long to figure out that I love you. How long did it take? No more of that stuff. No, the Hispanic Americans are great. And you know, uh, they did. They released a poll today, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. The Republicans are beating the Democrats with Hispanic Americans. Think about it. No, we're doing great. We're doing great. And uh, they never like to show those polls. Whenever you see they don't show too many polls, that's only because we're winning. We're winning by a lot. We think we're winning by, like, a lot. But the only poll that counts is on November 3rd, right? That's the only poll that counts, right? So get out there. Don't let them bluff you. Whatever it is, get out there and vote the Republican Party is the party of jobs, safety, and freedom, and we will ensure that America never becomes a socialist or communist country. I've added that recently. I said socialist country. I said now a socialist or communist country, because these people are crazy. Kamala. You know, Kamala is further left than Bernie. I didn't know that. She is the furthest left in the U.S. Senate. She was up at 15% when she started. You know that, right, that story? She went down to 14, then she went to 12, then she went to 11. She went to 9 and 8, 6, 4, 2, 1. And then she left before Iowa, the great state of Iowa, where I made ethanol possible for them, ethanol. And I gave our farmers $28 billion. Thank you very much, China. We took it out of China because they were targeting Iowa, Nebraska, a lot of our great states, Wisconsin. We gave our farmers a lot of money. Some came down to farmers down to Florida. They don't know that. We got a lot of farmers in Florida. But here's the choice facing every Florida voter. Joe Biden will deliver a crippling shutdown. He's actually thinking about can you imagine? No, we did that. And we saved millions of lives. That's it. We're doing good now. And by the way, your governor's done a great job. Florida is down low now with the China virus. It's China virus. Some people call it coronavirus. That sounds like a beautiful place in Italy, right? No, no. it didn't come from Italy. It came from China. But this guy's talking. He'll shut it down. And the scientist says, shut it down. He'll shut it down. No, we're not shutting anything down. We are doing so well. You look at our numbers. Where do you see the third quarter? I shouldn't say it because back there. But where do you see how good the third quarter is going to be? And it comes out just before the election. So I'm taking a risk when I say it. 
you won't believe the numbers you say. I tell you, you're going to see numbers. Nobody's going to believe those numbers. We're hearing from 25 to a 35 percent GDP. Nobody's ever heard of that before. Well, Iran has a 25% GDP, too, but it's a negative GDP of 25 They just announced negative 25 uh, They don't like me too much. Be careful. Be careful. I'm delivering a safe vaccine, and we're doing a record recovery. This recovery is a record. They've never seen anything like it. And next year is going to be, I think, the best economic year in the history of our country. Unless a very sleepy guy got in and he decided to quadruple everybody's taxes, then you can forget. He's a sleepy guy. Did you see he did a lid this morning? Again, lid, lid. You know what a lid is? A lid is when you put out word you're not going to be campaigning today. So he does a lid all the time. I'm working my ass off. I'm in Texas. I'm in Ohio. I'm in North Carolina, South Carolina. I'm in Michigan. I'm all over the place. Mis uh, Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you. But he puts a lid on. So a lid, I didn't know what the hell a lid was. I've only been doing this for three and a half years, right? So, but a lid is, you know, you're not going to go out today. You're going to stay in your apartment or let's put it this way, in his basement. So early in the morning, uh, he's put a lid on. That means nothing for today. I guess they do that for the press. The fake news goes home and they say how great he is as a candidate. They go home and they say he's a great candidate. But he put another lid on, there's many lids. So he did a lid today, early in the morning that he won't be working today. And I don't know, I'm working so hard. Maybe he's right. Think of it. Supposing he never campaigns and he wins, you know how badly I'm gonna feel? I'm working hard. And you got to work hard. And you know what? I said it today. We cannot have a low energy individual as our president. We can't. And he's the lowest energy individual I've ever seen. I've ever seen. So we'll see what happens. But uh, he's litting up. Maybe he's going to be great at the debate. You know, he's been doing it for 47 years. Somebody said, oh, he won't do well at the debate. I said, I think you're wrong. He'll do fine. He's going to do fine. They'll give him a big shot or something, and he'll go out there. He'll have a lot of energy. He'll, he'll have energy. He'll be like uh, Superman for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Biden's plan will crush Florida. My plan will crush the virus, and we're doing it. We're rounding the turn. We're rounding the turn. Under my leadership, prosperity will surge. Normal life. Oh, I love normal life. We want to get back to normal life. We'll fully resume. The Florida tourism and hospitality industries will reach record highs. That's what's going to happen. You see it. And next year will be one of the greatest years we are going to have. I'm telling you, mark it down. And if I'm wrong, you'll say I was wrong. I say sorry about that. But <laughs> uh, we're going to have a great year. We're going to have a great everything. Our country is doing great. Our military has never been stronger. We've taken out so many bad ones. And hopefully it's so strong that we'll never have to use it. You understand that you want to make it so strong. We've never had weapons like this. No, no country in the world ever possessed the power, the weaponry. What we have is so incredible. Nobody's ever possessed it before. Not Russia, not China, not anybody. With the envy of the world, hope to God we never have to use them. That's all I can tell you. This election. It's about jobs, and by the way, speaking of jobs, it's all made in the USA, everything we have. And this election is also about law and order. You know, they said, oh, don't say law and order. That's too, that's too tough a term. They say, sir, say law and order very lightly, and then say, and safety and liberty and this. And I said, no, no, it's about law and order. We have to have law and order, right? And these Democrat-run states are a disaster. They're a disaster. You look at what's happening all over the country, and many of them. Look at Portland. How bad is that? I mean, how bad is that? And I will say, uh, last night in Kentucky, I spoke to the governor. He's a Democrat. We had a great talk. 
and he pulled out his National Guard, and he's doing it good, and I give him credit. I give him credit, but mostly they don't want to do that. I say, let us send the National Guard. I did it in, remember? Minnesota. We're going to win Minnesota. So I did it in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They were having a hard time. And took a little long, a little longer than we wanted, but we got the okay to get in. We solved that problem in about 25 minutes, I think it took. They formed the line. That was the hard part. The easy part was just walking straight ahead. They never flinched. They were not socially distanced. They were right next to each other. They had $250,000 a piece uniforms. They had more stuff on their head. I'm trying to figure out what is it. They had computers. They had infrared goggles. They had everything. And they walked forward with their canisters of tear gas and pepper spray. And it was, remember the CNN reporter, he went down. He got hit on the knee with a can of what? Yeah, that's right. He got hit. He said, I'm down. I'm down. He was down. It's too bad. I felt badly for him, though. He went down. Ali Velci. Remember, he was standing and he was saying, this is a friendly protest. It's wonderful to see the lovely people that are here. You know, he's ducking. And behind him, the entire city was burning down. Do you remember that? The entire city. Why are they doing that? What's the purpose of it? I don't get it. I don't get it. But no, he got hit on the knee with a canister of tear gas. They say it hurts. It hurts you. And that's only going 52 miles an hour. A bullet goes about 2,000 miles an hour. But they say it hurts, but uh, they cleaned out that city. In a half an hour, they had no problem. Minneapolis, that's one of the reasons I'm going to win. Another reason would be Ilan Omar. That's a reason. Omar. We're going to win because of Omar. That's a beauty. That's really, she's great. She's great. She loves our country very much. She has uh, total disrespect for our country. And uh, I think she has hatred for our country. But uh, I would say Omar is a big reason that we're going to win. They're not too fond of her in Minnesota. I'll always fight for the right of all citizens to live in security and peace. So we have law and order. Joe Biden is weak as hell. He surrendered his party to flag burners, rioters, and anti-police radicals. The Democrat Party's war on police. You know, a lot of people say cops. I never liked the word, you know, my father, sit down, please. Come on, we'll be here for a while. What the hell? Yes, sir. We have nothing else to do. I have nothing else to do except run a country. And the hardest part about running the country is dealing with crazy Democrats. You know, um, we're working on stimulus for people because it's not, it's not their fault. It was China's fault. And we can't get Nancy Pelosi to approve it. She wants to wait till after the election. I said, people want their money now. It's not going to have any impact from that standpoint. People want their money now. The Democrat Party's war on cops is putting the lives of innocent police officers in danger. But my father had great respect, always had great respect for law enforcement, for the police. And one time I said, Dad, the cops are out there. Look at that. They look great. And he says, never use the word cops. It's police. That's the kind of respect he had. He thought, I don't want to, you know, right? Look, I have a couple of pretty rough looking guys. No, it's true. So I always find it a little hard. You know, I just left an impression. It's police. He thought it was slang. And I don't think they mind. I don't think, how many? We got a lot of them here. Does anybody mind the term cops? And who's here that's a policeman or woman? Policeman. Do they mind? A lot of them. A lot of them. Do they mind that term, cops? No. They just want respect, and they just want to be allowed to do their job properly, as nobody can do it. Do you agree with that? That's what I'd say. All right, now start calling them cops. Respect us and let us do our job. Earlier this month, two sheriff's deputies were ambushed at close range in Los Angeles, California. I called them both. And they're okay, but they were hit. They were hit bad. Last night, as you know, two police officers were shot in Louisville, Kentucky. Every year, dozens of courageous police officers lay, lay down their lives for people that they never met, people that they don't know, people they never saw in most cases, right? 
They lay down their lives for people they never met. They're incredible. Law enforcement, let's give them a hand, please. Thank you very much. That's good. I tell them all the time, you know, we have endorsements from all of them, but I tell them all the time, you have no idea how much you love. You know, they don't hear it because they watch the fake news at night and you don't get the you don't get the true story. That's a lot of guys. That's a lot of people back there. That's a lot of fakers back there. Look at all those red lights. The red light means you're on live, you know. The problem with being on live, you make a little bit of a mistake and they say this was a horrible incident. That's enough of that. Nah, it's very dishonest. It's, it's a shame. It really does hurt our country. It's so fake. They don't show the protesters. They don't show it. You know, when you think that, like, cities are burning down and storefronts are being exploded, people are being killed, they would have you believe there's nothing happening. It's the most incredible thing. I don't even understand why. No matter where your philosophy is, no matter where you stand, why wouldn't you want to show the facts, show what's happening? And then we fix it. The Republican cities don't have trouble. The Republican states, they don't have trouble. You go to you go to different states, they don't know. They find it, you know, some of these governors, friends of mine, and I have friends on both sides, but Republican governors, red states, they look like, how is a thing like this possible? Because they have law and order. They have law and order for this. I mean, that's what it is. For the entire summer, Joe Biden was silent as his far left supporters assaulted police officers, harassed innocent Americans and set fire to buildings. They were rioters, they were looters, they were anarchists. He called them peaceful protesters. He said they're peaceful protesters. Joe, they're not peaceful. Now maybe he believe, he may believe it. I mean, honestly, they may say they're peaceful. Okay, I'll say they're peaceful. I think he believes it, I actually do. It's the other ones that you have to worry about because they call the shots, not him. He's called for the ridiculous cutting of police funding, abolishing cash bail, if you can believe that, and the closing of our prisons. They want to close our prisons. That's a good idea. He even described law enforcement as the enemy. He said law enforcement is the enemy. Now, you know, I, I assume, I'll ask the fake news, has he taken it back, I assume, because he's taken everything back. He's taken anti-fracking back. He's taken pretty much everything back. But remember, it's the first thing they say. That's what they stick with. Biden's anti-police crusade must stop. As president, I will always stand with the heroes of law enforcement. That's why we're here. And I was honored to receive the endorsement of 48 sheriffs right here in Florida. Three weeks ago, and all over the country, law enforcement from Texas, Arizona, Ohio, Oklahoma, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New York's finest endorsed me. They've never endorsed a presidential candidate. The National Troopers Coalition, Chicago. How about that? Chicago police, they endorsed me, Chicago. And all the major law enforcement organizations all across our country. They go back home to mommy, they, mommy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
You know the incredible thing about that? I didn't hear anything except our crowd. No, they have no voice. They're screaming at the top of their lungs, but their lungs are very small. And I didn't hear, all of a sudden you hear, whoa, like this right here. It's true. If people, if you wouldn't recognize them, we wouldn't even know they're here. Now, tomorrow, the headline is... So you have one young protester. The headline will be tomorrow. Trump's rally broken up by protests. What a very young girl. She's a girl. Not a girl, she looks like she's like about years old. How the hell is that happening? 200 generals and leaders, also hundreds of military spouses, given their complete and total endorsement to a uphold our land and to uphold our constitution as written on Saturday, announcing my nominee to the United States Supreme Court. Garden of the White House, unless it's raining, in which case we'll still do it there. That's okay. It's beautiful, the White House, so beautiful. We love the White House, right outside the Oval Office. And, you know, uh, they don't want us to do it. The Democrats say, you shouldn't do it. Why? We have a lot of time. Let me ask you the one simple question. If it was them instead of us, do you think they'd do it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, this will be a very talented person. It will be a woman. I'm sorry, man. It will be a woman. All right, ready? Who would rather see a man? Oh, that's trouble. Try it again. Who would rather see a man? That's not good. Who would rather see a woman? I think it would be, really, I think it would take tremendous courage. I don't care how great the man is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you that Jim Fitzgerald, and then you would see a lot of very unhappy faces, right? My opponent refuses to release his lists of potential justices because they will be handpicked by extremists like Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, sometimes known as AOC plus three, right? AOC. And one of the three, I think, is Omar, right? But they'll pick the person. So if Biden does that, if he puts an extremist into that position, he loses everything that's like normal. And if he does the other way, he loses the left. So he doesn't want to give a left. I'd love to have him put up a list. I'd like to see what that, I could see what that list would be. I could already tell you the people on that list. It would not be good. It would not be pretty. You would not be happy. That would be the end. If given power, Biden and his supporters would pack the court. You know, they're talking about packing the court because we have won races. We have won. Uh, I'll tell you what. So this will be my third and we're in great shape. You see the, do you see what's going on with the Republican Party? How unified the Republican Party is? Right? Now we're unified. It's a beautiful thing to say. Thank you, Mitt. Thank you. Appreciate it. Even Mitt's on board. Even Mitt's on board. No, it's a, it's a good thing to see. Having a unified party. Of course, when they did the impeachment hoax, we had 197 to nothing in the House. And 52 and a half to a half. That was Mitt. But that's okay. I'm no longer angry at Mitt because he's being very nice on the Supreme Court. He's doing, he's doing the right thing. I just want him to do the right thing. But they want to pack the court. You know what that means? They want to put on a lot of justices. These are things that are just horrible. I guess we could do that too, right? We could do that too. 
But remember, it was Harry Reid that made this all possible. You know, they're angry at us. Listen, Chuck, crying Chuck, you know what crying Chuck is? Chuck, every time you complain, remember, it was Harry Reid, your person in charge. He had your job before. It was Harry Reid who made this all possible. Thank you very much, Harry. I hope you're enjoying your evening. Oh, they blame us. Harry Reid gave us the power. Nuclear option. Thank you very much. But he wants to pack the court, Supreme Court, with radicals who will terminate the Second Amendment, confiscate your firearms, eliminate the right to self-defense, strike under God from the Pledge of Allegiance and all other places. Tear down crosses from public spaces and force taxpayers to fund extreme late-term abortion. <laughs> These far-left justice <laughs> violent criminals shield foreign terrorists, impose sanctuary cities, and declare the death penalty totally unconstitutional. Hey, it will be totally unconstitutional. They want to declare it unconstitutional for even the most depraved mass murders. And it's a tough thing, it's a tough thing. They came to my office today at the death penalty at, for clemency. I said, what was the crime? The crime was so horrible that I won't tell you what it was, but it's been going on for 21 years or so. The crime was so horrible that this person committed that I said, look, I just can't talk about it. It was so it was so horrible, and that's usually the case, usually the case, like the Boston bomber. And by the way, they want to give votes to prisoners, people in prison. They want to give us. So we immediately said, remember Bernie, crazy Bernie. Bernie is, I'll tell you one thing about him. He's the greatest loser I've ever seen. Oh, no, I mean that in a respectful way. Because what they did to him with Hillary was bad, but this time was even worse. Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren would have left the campaign one day before Super Tuesday. Bernie, with her ideology, basically, because she's a radical left, and she was really fresh to him, but she was really fresh. How bad was Elizabeth Warren to Joe Biden? There's only one person that was worse. Who was worse? Kamala. I said, he'll never, this shows you my great instinct, my great knowledge of politics. I said, he will never pick Kamala because no human being has been treated worse but, than anybody than Kamala. Remember, she, she called him a racist. She called him xenophobic. She called him all sorts of things. She called him things that were so bad, I can't say them. I can't say them. But she called him a lot of things. I said, well, she's out. And then he picks her. She picks her. And well, you always pick people going up, not going down in the polls. You know, if I were going to pick, and by the way, how good is Mike Pence? Is he great? Yeah. Okay, he's a rock. He's a solid guy, and he's a great guy, and a great vice president, and he works so hard. He's all over the place. He's in Michigan. He's, in, he's everywhere. Where'd you go today, Mike? I went to Michigan, North Carolina, South Carolina. I went to... Wisconsin, and the guy, I tell you what, he's an incredible guy, and he's a great guy, and he loves the people of this country, he loves our country. You cannot do better than Mike Pence, you know that. If you want to save America, you must get out and vote. In just three and a half years, we've secured our borders, rebuilt the awesome power of the U.S. military, obliterated ISIS caliphate 100 percent, fixed our disastrous trade deals, and they were a disaster. I read some of them. They, I said, who agrees to this stuff? Stupid people agree to it. And brought jobs back home to America, and we brought them back. You had the greatest year you've ever had last year. The greatest year you've ever had. Under 16 years of presidents, Obama and Bush, household income rose only $2,945. Okay, 
That's over a course of 16 years, close to 3,000, right? In three years, and including energy, because look at the saving. How are you doing at the gas pump? Not so bad, right? Did you ever see that? Did you ever think that was going to happen? In three years, so that was less than 3,000 over 16. In three years, you went up $10,000, including energy. We lifted 6.6 .6 million people out of poverty, the largest poverty reduction in the first three years of any president in the history of our country. We built the greatest economy in the history of the world, not only here, anywhere. We were beating everybody. You know, for years I heard that China in 2019 was going to overtake us, right? That didn't happen. And they released the plague, but that didn't happen. And it still is not happening with the plague because they got hit hard themselves. I wonder if they understood that they were going to hit, get hit too, right? But the plague came here. They could have stopped it. They could have stopped it from going all over the world, 188 countries all over the world, including Europe and the United States. We've added a record 10.6 million jobs in the last four months, including 3.3 million jobs for Hispanic Americans. That's a record. Both numbers are a record. When the plague arrived from China, we launched the largest national mobilization since World War II. We pioneered life-saving therapies, reducing the fatality rate 85% since April. You see what's happening? Europe has almost a 50% greater excess mortality rate than the United States. And now you see they're being hit very hard. The fake news was saying, well, I don't know if you've done as well as Europe. I said, we did better than Europe. And now Europe is exploding again. Unfortunately, I don't want that to happen, but they don't want to talk about that because that's not good for their narrative. Our early and aggressive action saved many millions of lives. Through Operation Warp Speed, we developed and distributed a vaccine. We will have a vaccine so soon you won't even believe it. Although they're trying to do a little bit of a political hit. Let's, let's today, it's just a little bit. You notice that? Let's delay the vaccine just a little bit, but we have three great companies and then others also. Johnson & Johnson, right? Pfizer, Moderna, great companies, all of them great companies, and they're right there. They're way advanced, way advanced. They're in the final steps. I took historic action to get critical relief for American workers through our Paycheck Protection Program. We saved 3.2 million Florida jobs. We're launching a historic effort to bring our medical supply chains back home where they belong. In 1996, Joe Biden voted to obliterate Puerto Rico's thriving pharmaceutical industry. I am reversing that and we're going back so that Puerto Rico can get its pharmaceutical industry back and they're going to have it back soon. That was Joe Biden that did that. And then they'll vote because automatically, I don't know, they vote for a Democrat. What's the purpose? He's the one that did it. He's the one. Look what he did, how devastated. Look at what he did to our African-American community. And people don't want to talk about it. But what he did was devastating. Devastating. He's not good for, he's not good for anyone, let's face it. Last week, I also announced an additional $13 billion that goes to disaster relief for Puerto Rico. They got hit hard. I hope they remember that that was given by Trump, not by the Democrats. Our hearts are also with the communities in the panhandle. I love the panhandle. Ron will tell you. I'll tell you, you're a great governor and he's doing a great job. He called up, he said, the panhandle's hit, sir. They love you in the panhandle. I think I'm at about 99.9% .9 in the panhandle. But we took care of we took care of the panhandle. You remember Hurricane Sally? That was not good, but we took care of it. Ron came into my office and said, Sir, we need more money. I said, How much? He gave me a number you don't even want to believe. I said, You got it, Ron. Don't come back, Ron. He comes back about three days later. Sir, we need more money. But that's, I guess, a good governor. That's what a good governor does, right? That's what a good governor does. I approved a major disaster declaration for the state of Florida last night. And we will be with you every step of the way. Every step. You're there. We're there so fast. We sometimes, you know, other presidents took 
long time to approve them. I approve them before the storms hit shore, because we know what's going to happen. We took care of Florida. On November 3rd, Florida will decide whether we end the pandemic and return to record prosperity or whether we allow Joe Biden to kill the recovery, delay the vaccine, impose a $4 trillion tax hike, ban American energy, which he wants to do, destroy the suburbs. He's going to destroy the suburbs. Give free health care to illegal aliens, which means millions and millions of people are going to pour into our country and indoctrinate your children with poisonous anti-American lies in their class in their school. To combat the toxic left-wing propaganda in our schools, I announced something last week that was very popular, that we're launching a new pro-American lesson plan for students called 1776 Commission. We'll teach our children the truth about America, that we are the most exceptional nation on the face of the earth, and you haven't seen anything yet. You see what we're doing. I've also issued an executive order to prohibit the teaching of critical race theory in the federal government. That hateful Marxist doctrine paints America as a wicked nation, seeks to divide everyone by race, rewrites American history, and teaches people to be ashamed of themselves and be ashamed of their country. That's not happening anymore. We fired so many of these wise guys. We had one getting $350,000 a year teaching our military this stuff. And he said, what happened? We said, you're fired, get out, done. And many people. No, it's, it's, become, it's become a cancer. It's like a cancer. But many, many people gone. They're all gone. And if they're not, let us know and we'll let them go. But we have to unite together as one proud American family. That's what we are. We are joined tonight by some incredible warriors, some incredible people. One of them that I'm most proud of is a man that came to this state and what a job he's done your great governor, Ron DeSantis. He's doing a great job. Ron is doing a great job. Ron, how are we doing in the election? How are we doing on November 3rd, Ron? Uh, okay, he says good. We better do good. Well, he uh, won a great primary, and then he beat a man that they said had a good future. I'm not thinking his future's looking too good, but how's his future? I don't think it's too good right now. Ron was great, tough and strong, and he didn't choke under pressure, that's for sure. But much more important than Ron is the first lady of Florida, Casey DeSantis. The mayor of Jacksonville, a really good guy. I got him to really, he wanted to do it so bad. We wanted to have our Republican National Convention right here in Jacksonville. But the timing was a little bit bad. We got hit a little bit with uh, COVID, as they say. We got hit a little bit with the China virus. And, but I'll tell you what, Lenny Curry was absolutely fantastic. Your mayor, Lenny Curry. All right, you ready? Some of the greatest, toughest warriors you'll ever meet during the impeachment hoax, they said, this is the biggest pile of crap you've ever seen. I'm the only guy in history that got impeached for an absolutely perfect conversation. It was perfect. We sent it around, everyone said, what's wrong with this? We sent it to the Justice Department. Please check this. Thank goodness we had people that were taking it down, right? Exact notes. Great patriots. They took it down. Two of them. And it was perfect. We sent it to the Justice Department. Please examine this conversation. We'd like to know what you think. They called back. They said, uh, 
Okay, listen, now what exactly are you looking for here? You know, these guys are used to looking at killings and drug dealers. And they're saying, uh, explain to us, what are you looking for? We don't see anything, you know. This was the greatest hoax. And today, by the way, you see what happened? They caught him. They've got him cold. They got him cold. We'll talk about it in a second. They caught him. They now find out that Trump was 100% truthful. It was a hoax. They got him cold. It was just announced. Dan Scavino just said it's the biggest, it's the hottest thing on the internet. They got him cold. We'll talk about it in a second. But these are warriors. When I needed warriors, I had them. Representative Matt Gates. Where's My Matt. What a great guy. What a guy. Big future. Thank you, Matt. What a warrior. Thank you. But he's very shy on television, right? I know this. He's great. Thank you, Matt. Ted Yoho. Ted. Ted. Where's Ted? Great job. Now, uh, you know, a man that is in charge of all spying, he was so good that Matt and Ron and Ted and Mike Waltz and a lot of people came to see me, Mike. Another great one. Thank you, Mike. Is John Rutherford here? Where is he? Where is he? What a good job, John. Thank you. Thank you for the help. Thank you, John. But Mike Waltz has been so great. And Candidate for Congress, Kat Kamak. Kat. So Kat was in the Oval Office yesterday, right? And uh, I said, how are you doing, sir? I'm up 42. I said, 42 what? 42 points. That was a big Trump district, right? You're not in any real trouble, that's uh, for sure. She's got, that was a great, that was a great win you had. She'll be with us a long time, a long time. I want to, I really appreciate it. And we also have some others that are running for different offices in the Republican Party, and we love the Republican Party. They have been incredible. They have been incredible. We also have some of our really unbelievable undercover operatives. And if you don't mind, I won't introduce them. All right. I don't think we're going to introduce them. I want to so badly. I want to have them stand up, bring them up here. I want to hug them and kiss them, which I'm not allowed to do because of social distancing. But somehow they may lose some effectiveness if I introduce them. So they're in the crowd. I saw two of them. And I won't bother, but they are great, great champions of our country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also, here is a woman who was so, I mean, she was tough. She was in charge of a great state, Michigan. And she kept asking me, come back, you're going to win. Everyone said, you know, Republicans hadn't won Michigan in many decades. And I felt I should because I was bringing back and I, I was doing so much for the business and jobs and bringing people back and recommending and telling them you're losing your business to Mexico, Canada. And they gave me 12 years ago, they gave me the man of the year in Michigan. And I made this crazy speech that I said, you're losing all your jobs to Mexico. And all of a sudden I'm running for office and a woman who handled it was unbelievable. She'd say to me, sir, would you please come and make a speech? I said, who are you? My name is Ronna McDaniel. I'm in charge of Michigan. Where's Ronna? She said, my name is Ronna McDaniel. I'm in charge of Michigan. I said, I hear we don't have a chance. We should win Michigan, but I hear you're going to win it if you come here. So I went and made a speech. Then I went and made another speech. Then she'd call again and again. I couldn't take it. And then I said, look, I'll do one more. She wanted me to do one more. She said, I'm telling you, you're going to win. Do one more. This is two weeks left. And I said, all right, this is it, though. This is it. You know, I've devoted a lot of time to Michigan, and everyone says you can't win. By the way, 
Just got a poll. We're three points up in Michigan. She said, sir. Then she used to call me Mr. Trump. I wasn't president yet. She said, sir, please, uh, just this one time. This is it. Three, three weeks out. I said, all right, this is it. Can't do anymore. Got to go to a lot of states. That's it. This is it, sir, I promise. So I did it. Then the night before the election, she said, sir, you're going to win Michigan, but you got to make one more stop. I said, yeah. And I made it on election day. I arrived at 1215 in the now morning. That was now election day, right? I started speaking at one o'clock in the morning on election day. My wife said, are you crazy? We had 32,000 people. And the reason I went, she wanted us there, but we found out that crooked Hillary Clinton, Barack Hussein Obama, and Mrs. Obama, and Bill Clinton were traveling to Michigan unexpectedly because as Bill Clinton told them three months ago, you're gonna have trouble with Trump in Michigan. They don't wanna to listen to him, you know? They said, oh, well, because he's a natural politician. And he said, you're gonna have trouble in Wisconsin too, and be careful of Minnesota. This was Clinton. Remember, they were laughing. They thought he was very funny. But they knew they were in trouble, so they flew there. They had 500 people. I went there and I started speaking at one in the morning with 32,000 people in Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids. In Grand Rapids. And I said, it's like this. I said, we're not going to lose this state. You can't lose. When you have a crowd, you can't lose. You know, you can look at a crowd. I can look at this crowd. I can see. Look at it as far as the eye can see. As far as the eye can see. I'd leave here. I say, we're not losing Florida. I can tell you that. You can tell. You can feel it. You can feel it. You have an instinct. We're joined as well by a group of incredible supporters who have recently walked away from the Democrat Party. They walked away from the Democrat. They just registered as Republicans. Thank you. Thank you. And they're going to be voting for us. It's just a whole big group of people, and I thank you, and you're all over the place. And thank you. Thank you. They know. It's called they're smart and they have common sense. We've spent the last four years reversing the terrible damage Joe Biden inflicted over the last 47 years. Together, we've taken on a corrupt and broken system that's been throwing everything at us from the very beginning. And remember this, and I say it all the time, I've done more in 47 months than Joe Biden's done in 47 years. That's true. That's true. That's true. But today, a trove of text messages was released from the FBI agents involved in the Russia witch hunt. Did you, you had to see this. This is what I was talking about before. The headline from the Federalist reads, Trump was right. Explosive new FBI text detail internal furor over handling of the crossfire hurricane investigation. That was the name. We caught him. We had them before this, but this is like, remember the insurance policy? Darling, darling, oh, I love you so much, darling. She's going to win, isn't she? Yes, 100 million to one. That's not good odds for me. They might not have been great, but they were a lot better than that. 100 million to one, Lisa. I love you so much. But if for some reason, she doesn't win. We have an insurance policy. That's what we've been living through, their insurance policy. You can't be any more obvious than that. These people are scum. They were trying to do a coup. Who would think? And we caught them before that. We caught them spying on our nation. And they've gotten caught. Let's see what happens with them now. But this was a big day. This was a big day. Never forget. They are coming after me because I am fighting for you. There's a lot of truth to that. For decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars 
rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. But now we are finally protecting our nation, rebuilding our cities, and we are bringing our jobs, our factories, and our troops back home to the USA. Joe Biden championed every globalist betrayal of America for 47 years. He was a cheerleader for NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made. Emptied out your factories. And he was a cheerleader for China's entry into the World Trade Organization. I took the toughest ever action to stand up to China's rampant theft of American jobs. And I proudly signed a historic executive order making an official government policy to buy American and hire American. By the way, you ever see this guy? He's using my slogans. He's using my slogans. I saw him the other day. It's like, buy American. I said, I've been saying that for five years. Right? He's using my, he has no clue. I'm telling you. You got to come up with your own slogans, Joe. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military and launched the first new branch of U.S. Armed Forces in nearly 75 years after the Air Force, the Space Force. Right here. We passed VA choice and VA accountability. Nobody thought that could happen. We have a 91% approval rating in the VA, right? 91% approval rating. Highest in history, highest ever. You ever see, I don't want to say this to them because they'll find a vet. So, is there an unhappy vet someplace? 91% approval. Remember, we used to always watch every night you see things on the news about how badly the vets are treated. Now we have a 91% approval rating. My guys are doing a great job. And today I can announce that the VA is approving a new $46 million lease for a brand new veterans health care clinic in North Jacksonville. We killed the founder and leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We took out the world's number one terrorist, all over the world, number one. The mass murder of American troops and many others. Qasem Soleimani is dead. Took him out. He deserved to be taken out. We withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal, $150 billion. You know what he got for it? Nothing. $1.8 billion in cash. He got nothing. Nothing. I kept my promise, recognized the true capital of Israel, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, and instead of endless war, we are forging peace in the Middle East. You saw what is happening there. In fact, I was nominated for two Nobel Peace Prizes last week. You know the story. You know the story. And I told our great First Lady, I said, First Lady, I was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm going to come home early. I'm going to watch it on NBC News, which is one of the biggest scam jobs I've ever seen. NBC, probably worse than CNN, NBC. But we're going to watch it. We're going to watch the evening news. So we'll watch second place NBC. You know, it is the second place. They spend all this money on PR, and then I hit them hard. But they are bad. I said, First Lady, wait till you see it. Nobel Peace Prize. This will definitely be the biggest thing. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, NBC News, they start off with you. They said you, you had some heavy rain. They started off with something else, something else, something else, something else. Now the show's almost over. I said, First Lady, they're not mentioning the Nobel Peace Prize. This is very embarrassing. But then it was okay because two days later I got nominated again. That was for Israel. I got nominated again. And I remember when, Obra what, remember when Obama got, he said, 
Ladies and gentlemen, Barack Hussein Obama has just been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. So what happened? So what happened? I said, first lady, I just got nominated again this time for Kosovo, Serbia. They're not killing each other anymore. I stopped it. It's totally different. The first was Israel, right? Bahrain, UAE. This one was Kosovo. Totally different. I don't know if that's ever happened before. I said, first lady, let's give it another shot. We watched the news, never even mentioned. When Barack Obama got his Nobel Prize, like immediately after he got elected, they asked him, why did you get it? He had no clue. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. And it was a big story. Breaking news. We have breaking news. They didn't have breaking news when I got it. But that's why we understand the press. We understand them very well. They are fake. The last administration made a pathetic one-sided deal with the Castro dictatorship that betrayed the Cuban people and enriched the communist regime. My opponent stands with socialists and communists. I stand with the proud people of Cuba, Nicaragua, Venezuela, in their righteous struggle for freedom. And you're going to win it very soon. You're going to win that very soon. The last administration also negotiated the terrible Obama-Biden-Santos deal with Colombian drug cartels. They surrendered the narco-terrorists. They surrendered to them and they caused illicit drug production to soar. Under my administration, we worked with our Colombian partners to launch a historic rival operation against the drug traffickers. And since April, we have seized or disrupted 227 metric tons of poisonous narcotics. Nobody has ever done anything like it. Joe Biden opposed the mission to take out Osama bin Laden. He opposed killing Soleimani. He voted for the Iraq war. He backed the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. And he cheered for the rise of China as a positive development for our country. I don't think so. That was a disaster. Now Biden's put forward the most dangerous and extreme platform of any major party nominee in history. The bad news is he doesn't even know what the hell it is. The Biden plan would destroy Social Security and destroy protections for pre-existing conditions. It will drain your Medicare by giving free health care to illegal immigrants that will come over to this country by the millions when they see this. End virtually all immigration enforcement and impose totally open borders. He would terminate our travel bans on jihadist regions. Remember I got that approved? They kept saying, oh, he lost, he lost, he lost. And then I won in the Supreme Court. We have a travel ban. Guess what? And increased refugee admissions by over 700 percent, opening the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. He wants to ban school choice and ban charter schools, which are absolutely imperative for our children. In a second term, I will provide school choice to every parent in America. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, and a limitless future for all Americans. And in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. We will make our medical supplies right here in the United States. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will defend the dignity of work and the sanctity of life. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. Second Amendment. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens, and we will keep out of America, of our great country. We will stay away from those ridiculous, endless foreign wars. They never end. Endless foreign wars. They're all coming home. They're all coming home. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength, and nobody has strength like we have strength. Peace through strength. We will end surprise medical bills, 
require price transparency and further reduce health insurance premiums and the cost of prescription drugs. They're going to be coming down by 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent. Favored nations. Favored nations clause. We'll be paying as low as anybody in the world. It's called favored nations. Nobody had the guts to do it. And they are spending a lot of money on ads against me right now. Those, that big pharma. They are spending a lot of money. We will strongly protect Medicare and Social Security, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. Thank you. That's really nice. I had such a nice life before doing this. But no administration has ever done in the first three and a half years, not even close, what we've done. And that's very gratifying. I want to tell you that. And thank you very much. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Florida. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors. Get your co-workers and get out and vote. We have to win this election. Most important election we've ever had. Early voting has already begun. Don't wait. Vote. It's safe. Go out and vote. I hear we're doing very well, by the way. That's what the word is. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But I hear we're doing very well. From Tampa to Tallahassee, from Orlando to Miami, from Pensacola, to right here in Jacksonville. We stand on the shoulders of Florida patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears for this beloved nation. We inherit the legacy of American heroes who crossed the oceans, blazed the trails, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, dug out the Panama Canal, laid down the railroads, raised up the skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism. And from here, in this beautiful, beautiful state, this sun-drenched state of Florida, we launched American astronauts to the moon. We made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come, you are. <laughs> Proud citizens like you help build this country and together we are taking back our country. We are returning the power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, your drive, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Florida, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. 
We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Florida. Thank you, Florida.